I spoke with Brianna Ruiz and her son Daniel, who just visited the memorial where I am here to pay respects to his fallen friends, including his cousin, nine-year-old Ellie Garcia. Daniel is just nine years old. He climbed through a broken window to survive Tuesday's shooting. Brianna and Daniel, thank you so much for, for telling your story. Um, Brianna, I'll start with you. What was it like as a parent? I mean, I can't even imagine. I have a son who's just a year older than Daniel, it waiting those terrifying moments before he came out. It was very terrifying. Um, when I got the call from my father, what was going on, I had literally just left his school because he had an award ceremony. And usually I, when he has things like that, I'll take my kids out of school early. And he had asked me that day if he could, but I had errands to run, so I had just turned to him, told him to stay, and I told him he was gonna be okay. Um, when I got there, that's all I could think of was that I should have taken them out. And it, it was scary. Where I was at, I was by the funeral home. And I know the layout of his hallway. Um, when they started pulling children out of the classes, I saw all the classes that rounded his area and my cousin's area as well. Um, once I saw all those children coming out and I saw that they weren't, it, it was a numbing feeling that I got just because I could feel something was very off and just knowing he was still in there, the shooter was still in there, it's, it, it was terrifying. It was one of the worst experiences ever. I can't even imagine. And then describe what happened when you finally saw Daniel. When he came out, it was a, over an hour later. He was actually one of the last ones from the back of his class coming out. Um, there was a student that was struck in his classroom. Um, and when I saw her, I mean, she was just covered in blood um, because he had broken her nose with a straight bullet. Um, when I saw that and I recognized the girl was in his class, it, it sent a more terrifying chill through my body because I saw all his friends running out and I still hadn't seen him. And then finally towards the end when him and another friend came running out together, it, it gave it gave me back like I like I couldn't catch my breath, you know. But I ran straight to him and I just held him and I remember somebody trying to get him out of my arms. But I just I kept holding him until I walked him myself to the funeral home. I grabbed him and a friend of his because his friend was very panicking too and I held both of them together because they've been in school together since, what, pre-K? <laughs> so, I mean, they've known each other literally since they were four years old. And yeah. it, his friend was just going on about um, his teacher getting hurt, about how the other student almost died because she got hit with the bullet. And it, um, they were just terrified. And Daniel, you climbed out through, through a window with broken glass. Mm -hmm. And you had glass in your arms, in your hand. But you're, physically you're okay. Yeah. Can you tell me about what happened in that classroom? We were just, like nothing really, but he just like shot like four bullets into our class, but like, her nose broke, and then our teacher got shot in her leg and her torso, but she's all right. He was never in your classroom? Because your teacher, 
right, that your teacher locked the door and broke the key. Mm -hmm. Did you see his face? Yeah. Through the window? Mm -hmm. That must have been, I, I, I can't even imagine, terrifying. What, did you, what were you doing when you were in the classroom? Mm, we, were in, we were about to do something until we heard the first two gunshots and then she locked the door and then she, she just like dropped on the floor. But everyone was like telling her to wake up even though she was okay. What, telling her to wake up because she had been shot? Mm -hmm. They were, thought she was like, like passing out because she was like shot. And were you hiding under desks? Where, where were you in the classroom? I was hiding under a table next to the wall that's, it goes to like the end of the wall to like the start of the wall. And it's like a very big table, but I could still see his face. Through, through the, the window? Wall. Do you think he saved you? Do you think he saw you? I think he did, but at the same time, like people were blocking me, so I don't really know. But I could see where he's like staring at people in front of me. And you all just, I'm sure, tried to stay very quiet. Not easy in any in any situation. It must have felt like you were there for so long. Was anybody in your classroom calling 911? My teacher was trying to, but then like as soon as she was about to press the call button, he showed up to the window, so she really can't, but we someone called him, but they were like she tried to call them, but they didn't like pick up. So she had to text them. Mm. How do you feel about going to school? I know it's going to be summer, but how do you feel about going back in the fall? Mm. Nervous. Are you are you are you able to talk about things with your with your mom? Mm, yeah. Yeah. How do you think? Uh, how do you think Daniel's doing as a mom? I mean, it's, it's obviously a silly question because we know the, the answer. But um, are you able to, to talk things through? We've talked to a lot of mental health professionals who say that just talking is so important. It is honestly um, that I do know because that's personally what I'm going to school for is, is counseling. Um, I do talk to him. I do remind him of how important it is to talk to me. And the good thing that I do have with all four of my children is we have an open relationship. So they know whether they're sad or if they think they're going to make me upset or anything like that, they do talk to me. They have that trust in me and confide in me about many things. And he. The first night, he really didn't want to talk about it, obviously, which, I mean, was okay. I told him, you know, you need to cry it out. You're scared. It's okay. Um, he hasn't really stepped foot into his room since the incident. Um, he, he was a real big gamer kid. Um, he hasn't done that either, just because it scares him. Um, I am working on getting him, you know, counseling and therapy long term because I know it's something that affects yeah. him. He does have a lot of night terrors. He does yeah. talk and scream and cry in his sleep. And I'll ask him, do you remember, like, you know, what you were saying yesterday? And he'll be like, no, no. Daniel, you, know, you don't remember any of that? No. You have, when you have night terrors, you wake up and... Your mom asks, you don't remember. Mm -hmm. Your cousin Ellie. What should we know about your cousin Ellie? She used, she liked to play basketball. Mm -hmm. She would always like 
when my little brother was at school, like her mom would pick her, him up and then when she would get there to their house, she would call him like to come in the car and stuff. Cause she would, cause she was here, she would pick him up. You guys were pretty close. Yeah, I know. Close with a lot of the people in there. Well, I, I just want you to know that you are such a brave person, such a brave person. I'm sure it doesn't feel like that right now, but you really are, and it's really remarkable that you came to tell your story and to talk about the heroics, heroics of you and your teacher and your classmates. Thank you so much, Daniel. Brianna, thank you as well. Thank you.